One of the things that keeps emerging as I do these interviews, and there are a number of them, is how different and varied people's experience with Tolkien's world is. I've said this many times before in the live streams, but engaging with a story with a book is one of the most intimate things you can do. You hear your voice. You bring who you are to a story that's already created. That's the beautiful thing about engaging with the source material. That's one of the most frustrating things about what we're seeing with the destruction and deconstruction of intellectual properties like Tolkien. The projecting of what should be an internal monologue, of what should be you as an individual, as a viewer, imagining yourself within the story, as opposed to needing to see yourself on the screen in the story. One of my channel members is named Blair de Blair. One of the striking features about him is his epic beard. I sat down with Blair to talk about his love of Tolkien. I hope you enjoy this voice, which is such an important part of the fire of fandom. It was when I was a kid in the 70s, they had that Baskin Robin or uh, Rankin's TV show, The Hobbit, that cartoon with the, you know, the wobbly scening. That was the first time I was ever exposed to Tolkien. Um, I've never read the books and it wasn't until the 2000s that I even found out that there was more to this story than just The Hobbit. That there's so much history, lived history in the story. It's not like you're just coming upon, uh, upon something that just happened. You know, there's cities that have been there that have fallen. You, you see the remnants of other civilizations. You have the ancient stories of the rain and all the things that happened, all the battles happened thousands and thousands of years ago. So, you know, that, that world building is just so incredible and so immersive. I gravitate toward Gandalf because he comes across as this powerful wizard, but then when you see him with the other wizards, he, you know, he kind of, he's checked. He's not the most powerful. He's kind of like in the middle, but yet he's kind of doubts himself and his power until he has to go all out and sacrifice himself. And then he, you know, basically gets rewarded and becomes back as Gandalf the White. I see, you know, that arc of his story, I think I like the most. I would say the radio plays, you know, they seem to be right spot on with what he wrote and his, you know, his message. Especially having Christopher Lee do the voice for so long as Gandalf. There's something special about a radio play anyway, but even those, because that came about long before the internet. So it's like a different, a different medium and a different time. It doesn't exactly roll off the ton, does it? Um, I know for a lot of the normies, when they hear of Lord of the Rings or any of Tolkien's work set in Middle Earth, it's going to be Lord of the Rings for the Hobbit. So if you're going to do a, a show or a movie or anything in a previous age, in order to get those people in, you have to give them, you know, a clue. So yes, this is, you know, instead of Tolkien and the Rings of Power, you know, they, they go for the easy one. They go for Lord of the Rings and the Rings of Power. Which, you know, I can see why they do that, but I think they could have maybe done something a little bit different to bring the people in, to clue them in that this is a, you know, set in the Middle Earth series. Has ever? This is Salty Texas Sea. I am Corey DB. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you've seen and heard, please hit that thumbs up button. 
If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you on board. That way you know when we have things like live streams, which we are going to be doing every Tuesday evening. Take care. I hope you're having a great 2022.